Well, oh my god, we are in the top 20 of my top 100 games of the decade countdown. These, of course, continue to be my personal choices of the games I've played this decade, sorted by an arbitrary order that is somewhat scientific, but isn't really. But we're almost there, and we're going to start on 20, but uh, as we go along, let me know your choices for games of the decade, and maybe make a few predictions for what you can expect in the top 20, and just generally let's have a discussion about all the cool games from the last decade. So let's get started on 20 right now. Judgment is just Yakuza, but now you're a detective. And that's the difference, really. I was curious about Judgment when I heard about it. I wanted to see what a detective game set in the same universe played like, and it plays like a Yakuza game. But with more lockpicking mini games and sequences where you look around an area trying to find clues, and also cats, because that's important too. It's got a really engaging story. The detective story is just, I was hooked on it trying to figure out the mystery as it went along. Sometimes I find that the Yakuza series, I don't latch onto the stories as, well, as much, but this one I did. I was hooked in and I was like, I need to know. I need to figure this out. Yagami is an absolutely great protagonist. I really like him as a character. He's, he's very serious on the surface, but constantly dips into just goofiness at the slightest opportunity, and I just really like him. And weirdly, I ended up playing this on the with the English dub. I wanted to play it in Japanese, but ended up accidentally playing it with the English dub. And you know what? The voice acting is actually not as distracting as I thought it would be. It's actually pretty good. But what I really liked about Judgment, and what it brought to the Yakuza series, even if it is a spin-off, is that just how vibrant Kamurocho felt. You could also just walk in and out of buildings freely, and that was pretty good. So. I liked Judgment. Didn't quite latch onto it in the way that I latched onto the main Yakuza games. I feel like the side stuff wasn't as interesting, but still an absolutely fantastic experience. A really gripping story and just an interesting perspective on the series, just taking it in a different direction. It was pretty cool. Hitman 2016 took a series that I've historically struggled to enjoy in any real terms. I've played demos of past Hitman games and just really not liked them. Hitman 2016 made me fall in love with it. I love everything about Hitman. It's so good. It's, it's just so expansive and so replayable because there are just so many ways to solve the levels. And it is just like a big old puzzle box where you're trying to figure out solutions to your goal. But there are so many solutions on offer, and all of them are viable, that you just you kind of want to keep going back to it to figure these things out. Like, the fact that there's a whole thing where you can convince someone that they're going insane, and that they're haunted by a ghost, and that leads you to be able to kill them. And it just, I just, there's so much creativity going on with with this game just so many creative ways of killing people i'm slightly terrified of the developers at io interactive for just how good they are at coming up with unique and interesting ways of killing people but it's just full of dark comedy as well and that's what really appeals to me is you've got 47 you can make him do yoga and play the drums and pretend to be a model and walk down the catwalk the fact that you can throw all this in there with this very serious, very stoic assassin is just hilarious and I love it. And it's just, all the locations are really interesting and a lot of them are just beautiful as well. Like Sapiens is great, Akaido's great. And yeah, I just, it's such a good game. And I keep wanting to go back to it and try different ways of doing the level. If you feel like it, throw in the second one, I just haven't played it yet. Absolutely loved Hitman. and. Just the fact that it turned around a series that I've historically not liked is its main achievement. (laughs) 
So initially, I didn't take much of an interest in Life is Strange. In fact, I actively avoided it because the developers, Don't Nod, previously had made a game called Remember Me, which ironically everyone's forgotten. I didn't because it was bad. And it really did. It was so bad that it put me off wanting to play Life is Strange. And I'm sad that it took me so long to actually get into it because Life is Strange is actually really, really good. It succeeds where their previous game had failed. Namely, in taking like its core idea, the idea of a teenage girl discovers she's got time travel powers, and it builds a game around that in an effective way. It's just such a really well-written, narrative-driven game. You have a lot of really weird dialogue that you can tell was written by Frenchmen wondering how t American teens talk. But weirdly, it's part of the charm, and it never stops you really clicking with the characters and the cast because they, the relationships between all the characters in the game is so well written that you want to help people, you want to listen to people's stories and figure people out, and you want Max to succeed, ultimately. And the time travel powers add like a really interesting angle on choice-based narrative and also just a, 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 an otherwise bog-standard drama. And the way that they've utilised the time travel powers are really, really good. But yeah, Life is Strange is just such a superb game with a lot of heart and a lot of charm. And it will just take you on an emotional roller coaster ride and not apologise for it. And it's great. So Splatoon 2 is really just an iterative sequel. It's not revolutionary, it doesn't do anything major to move Splatoon on. At its core, it's still the same game. Like the multiplayer modes are identical to the previous game and they don't really seem to have changed the formula too much or done anything with it. It's what they built around it that makes Splatoon 2 such a um, massive improvement on the first game. The first game was fantastic. It You've already seen it pop up on the top 100, but Splatoon 2 just takes everything the first game did and refines it, makes it really good. The customization options you've got have expanded drastically. They've added in the Jewelies, which are a really great weapon, and I love them, and I can't go back to play Splatoon now that I've gotten so used to having the Jewelies and the dodge move that just it's, it's ruined every other gun for me. It's the content they've got outside of that. So in the original game you had your online mode, your basic online mode, and then you had like a really short single player campaign. You have both of those things in this game, but you've also got the salmon run stuff, which is like a horde mode, which is really cool. And they added in the Octo expansion, which is really, really cool as well. And that that thing is just its own campaign, and it's it's really surprisingly long. And it delves into a lot of Splatoon's really weird, unexpected lore. You don't expect a game like this to have deep lore, but it does. And yeah, it's just it's impressive just how much they built on the first game to make this one. And yeah. I absolutely adore Splatoon 2, and I look forward to uh, where the series goes next. Civilization 5 continues to be an obsession of mine. It's one of those games that you can just load up whenever you just feel like kicking back and playing something. It's like a comfort game, essentially. But it's just such a, a deep, complex game, but it's also really easy to get to grips with at the same time and I feel like that's its main charm and I think the way that leaders interact with you in this so the various different world leaders the fact that you've got Gandhi and the ongoing joke about the nuclear weapons and all that sort of stuff it's such a fun game I would say you can just drop in and out of it at any time but once you drop into it you never leave for about five hours or more or, you know, several days, actually, probably more accurate. Just one more turn, guys. It's just so easy to get sucked into it. It doesn't overwhelm you with stuff, but there's so much stuff in there that you can work with to build your civilization and make it as great as you possibly can. 
And yeah, it's still, I think it's my most played game on Steam, unsurprisingly, because it is the sort of game where you can just sit there and end up playing for hours, because just it just keeps going. And you just, it's just one more turn, guys. It is, it is crack in video game form, and it must be outlawed. But I refuse to have it outlawed because it's just so goddamn good. Civilization V, hell yes. So when I first saw Horizon Zero Dawn, it was one of those games that I used my barometer on. So I have a, a barometer for games. If it has a female protagonist, I take an interest because it means that the developers have actually thought about who their protagonist is likely to be and not just made it, oh, well, what if, you know, buzz cut generic angry man in his 40s, you know? So, because usually when that happens, the rest of the game tends to be as boring as that sounds but if they don't they tend to be a little bit more interesting and I saw Aloy pop up in the trailers then I saw the giant robot dinosaur and I was like well I guess I'm sold now and so I was really interested in a game where you're playing a supposed tribal woman fighting robot dinosaurs I don't know what all that's about and the more I played Horizon Zero Dawn the more sucked into its story and its lore and its world building. It's such phenomenal world building. There is tons of stuff put into this to make this world feel compelling. It's... you constantly want to find out answers to all the secrets that lie within this world. And I just absolutely adored every minute of this game. Hunting robots is fun. And exploring the open world is not a chore, which is often a problem I find with open world games. But it's so distinctive in so many ways that I don't mind exploring it, I don't mind wandering around it. And yeah, it's just... and I absolutely love the storyline. And Aloy is a fantastic protagonist and I can't wait for the inevitable sequel. Yakuza is a serious crime drama that I got into this decade off the back of Yakuza 5 being free on PlayStation Plus. You guys telling me how great the Yakuza series was and then eventually getting into the series over time. Yakuza 5, I felt, was the best of the sort of older Yakuza games. Uh, you can include 3 and 4 into this entry as well, why the hell not? 3 is a weird one because again, 2009 in Japan and then in this decade in the rest of the world. But Yakuza 5, I just absolutely loved it. I love the fact that you have these five different protagonists, each with their own separate stories that all kind of culminate together. The fact that you had four cities to explore, so it never felt stale, despite it going on for hours and hours and hours. There's a million things to do in, in all four of these cities. They've just crammed in a ton of stuff. It's still got really, really compelling side stuff. Kiyu's taxi stuff is really interesting. And I actually got really into Saijima's hunting stuff, despite not really liking Saijima in 4. So that kind of helped me like that character a bit more. And it's just a really full experience, which kind of shows why I really like the Yakuza series, because they cram so much stuff in into basically life in Japan simulator and occasionally some crime stuff happens that you might want to pay attention to. Um, I also just really liked that you could play as Haruka, which is Kiyu's adopted daughter as she like embarks on a, an idol career and it's all just rhythm games and stuff and I'm like, I weirdly like this. Yeah, it's just, it's a brilliant experience for Act of Five and yeah, I highly enjoyed it.
The world of Gravity Rush is one of my favourite video game worlds. It's just beautiful, and I just love the concept of this city that's just floating up in the sky. It's separated into the different areas and connected by trams. It's completely impractical as a world, but I think that's what fascinates me about it, is just imagining living in this world. Gravity Rush, on the whole, is just a really, really cool open world game. But again, it's one of those where I don't mind exploring the world. It's mostly because you've got powers and you can just fling yourself across the map, and that makes life very nice indeed. It's such a weird, illogical kind of world that also just looks great because of the art style being drawn off like French comics and stuff like that. It's just really, it's, ah, I love it. And it, it goes further than that. The gravity powers that you get as part of the game, they're really fun to use. As you, again, you can just fling yourself across the map. And I love the fact that Kat, the main character, she isn't graceful in using these powers because she's a really clumsy character who's now like tasked with saving the world. She's a superhero because she's got these gravity powers and she just kind of flails in the air and falls in a vague direction and the fact that you can just crash into things and land awkwardly and it's all just part of the charm of the character. I really like Kat as a character. She's bumbling but she's kind hearted and I just, it's such good characterization that they've got. The storyline also just gets completely ridiculous in ways you don't expect until you remember that the original director of Silent Hill was the director on this. There's so much ambiguity, but it's such a fascinating story and a fascinating world that you get to explore with a really cool character. And I love everything about Gravity Rush. When compiling this list, you may have noticed that I've mentioned Little Big Planet quite a few times, mostly because you've got like Tearaway and Nights and Bikes from people who used to work on the game. You've got the people who made, I think, one of the handheld ones, making little nightmares and all this kind of stuff. And it all comes back to Little Big Planet. And while compiling this, I was trying to think, what is it about Little Big Planet that I'm so obsessed with? And I realised that everything about Little Big Planet is what goes on inside my head. So we, the, it's the cute but mildly rubbish but endearing craft aesthetic. You've got the very silly British humour. You've got Stephen Fry as the narrator. The music is basically my music taste con condensed into a video game. Little Big Planet 2 is the best one in the series by far because it took everything that made the first game great and it improved on everything. The, the main story is just brilliant. It really expands on the cast of characters and builds on how they made the levels work. It's so much better having actual like characters in the world than having just like, we built this kind of collection of things that vaguely look like a person and we stuck a mouth on it. Having those new characters is really, really appealing and the creation tools that you can use to build levels, they've expanded on them so much in the second game. and. It's just brilliant. I absolutely adore Little Big Planet 2. I'm just glad that someone made a game that looks exactly like the inside of my head. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New Dawn City Festival, a celebration of the history of our city. And now, to get things started, her honor, Mayor. Super Mario Odyssey is the best 3D Mario game by far. Every single aspect of Super Mario Odyssey is pure joy condensed into a video game. Just condensed into that tiny little Switch cartridge. Everything about it is joyful. Everything about it is fun. This is a game that sets you out in a series of levels that are largely quite open and you're encouraged to explore and they encourage exploration in so many really cool ways. It's just the fact that like you can see different bits of the environment and you think, oh, what if I did this? What if I interacted with, with the level in this way? And almost always, every single time that you think, oh, what if I tried this? 
you get rewarded for doing it. You get a moon, which is the main collectible of the game. You just it, the game just keeps doing that. They've thought of absolutely everything that a player might consider, and I'm astounded at just how much stuff they've crammed into this game to make it work the way it does. Just the sheer imagination on show is just Nintendo at their absolute best, and it, it is absolutely a flagship Switch title. Like, if you have a Switch and you don't have Super Mario Odyssey, I don't know what is wrong with you. And just, it's all backed up with just really gorgeous visuals. Like, across the board, every level looks great. And you've also just got this really good soundtrack. Like, almost every level theme is brilliant. And and it has a theme song now, which of course makes it even better because that theme song has the lyric, I'm flipping the Switch. Because it's a Switch game. Do you get it? It's funny. <laughs> but yeah, it's such a good 3D platformer. The best 3D Mario game, by far. And yeah, we are now almost at the end. There is one video to go in this series. Tomorrow we tackle the top 10 of my top 100 Games of the Decade countdown. I hope you've enjoyed the ride so far. Let me know what you think down below, and feel free to share some of your choices for Games of the Decade as well. And I will see you tomorrow with, finally, the last 10 in this countdown. I will see you then. <laughs>